Hi everybody, just thought I'd jump on quickly and say hi to you all. Day two of the free yourself from your feedback fears. Um, I may end up having to change the name for that. So, um, had a little bit of a long day today. Had some lunch with some friends where I was mocked for my lives and um, playing with my hair. So I'm going to try not to this evening. Um, and had my steroid injection on my shoulder today. So I'll make it a quick one because it really hurts at the moment. So just a quickie on today's subject. So I said to you guys to comment below on the post from earlier about um, times when you have had the opportunity to be given feedback and you've chosen to ignore it. So either it was because you didn't accept that what they were saying was um, relevant or because you decided that what they were saying you didn't care about, you're not interested. You know, lots of different reasons that you could have ignored feedback that's been given to you. And one of the things I wanted to kind of sort of see from you guys was the different ways that this has happened and what the results were. So when you've ignored feedback, did it end well for you? Or was it something that actually later on you learned from the experience that you probably should have done something and you should have you should have listened? So um, do please continue to comment. Um, as for this evening's live, it was more really about giving you an opportunity to understand when you should ignore feedback and when you shouldn't. So tomorrow we cover another side of it, but for this evening it's just about ignoring feedback. So an opportunity where I was giving some feedback where I wish I'd ignored it was a few years ago now I was in a job where um, I took on a new role and I had a new manager and it was fine, I loved what I did. And the feedback that they gave me was that they thought I should change some of my ways that I did things. They weren't happy about the, some, of my, some of my management styles and they weren't not so much not happy with it, but they just felt that I could do things differently. They had a group of other managers that they thought I should be more like. And one of the things that I was known for was the type of manager that I was. I was very different when I worked in the evening at the job that I was doing. I had a very much more relaxed management style and I had to kind of tailor that a little bit. And it wasn't about kind of... Um, changing myself in so as much as um, being different in the way that I behaved personally, but they thought that I should dress differently. I should, one of the comments was that I could, you know, dye my hair. And I know this sounds really bad, but yes, it did actually happen. Hi Dave, how are you? Um, and they, basically the same was that I should be polished up a little bit. And I've never been particularly polished and that's fine and I don't really care because I am who I am and I love who I am. So that was fine. But it really knocked my confidence. And what I did was I took that feedback really personally and I listened to it and I actioned on it. And that was my mistake. What I should have done is ignored it. I should have accepted that that was that person's opinion and it was relevant and it was fine. And maybe what I could have done is taken some of those things on board and adapted some of those things. But what I did was I went into overdrive and I tried to change everything about myself. So in meetings, I tried to be a little bit more posher and I tried to dress differently and I had my hair done differently and try to change all these things about me. And I stopped being who I was. And then one of the things that I really struggled with hi Denise trying to not frighten you this time you know by seeing that you're there and trying to not touch my hair thank you very much um but one of the things that I stopped doing was being the real me and I really really struggled with that for a long time because I felt like I wasn't the same person and my work did suffer a little bit for it so when I then decided to kind of stuff it and go back to being who I really was I flew again and I was much happier and I could really do the things I wanted to do and I could be the manager that I wanted to be and it was much better and I was much happier. So my experience from this is sometimes when you're given feedback that you think you should probably ignore, then ignore it, you know, follow your instincts, don't follow somebody else's rules if they don't fit your own. So especially things around morals and values and things like that. If you're being told that you should be different, but that doesn't fit your morals, then don't change who you are. Don't be different just to please somebody else. Because the only person that gets pleased is them. 
you don't, you stop being the person that you are and your happiness suffers. So feedback has a really, really important kind of role to play because it affects a lot about who you are. And it can affect lots of things about the person that you become as well. So a couple of things that I wanted to, I've got some notes here as well, just to make sure that I stay on track and I don't waffle too much because I am known for waffling. Um, so an example of this is if it's going to affect your life. So if it's going to affect your family, if it's going to impact. So if your feedback is that you should move and actually you love where you are and you know your kids go to the right school and you're in the right area that kind of thing you know then you can ignore that because if you don't want to move you don't have to um if it comes from a place of i'm trying to think of the right word really if it comes from a bad place so the person who's given you feedback has has an invested interest so they have an alternative motive to what they're asking you to do so if they're giving you feedback that they think that you should stop doing something so say that you're running your own business and a really big one is this thing on Facebook where you can um, suggest changes so I get quite regularly somebody who is another coach um, on another page in Milton Keynes suggesting changes to my Facebook page on a regular basis mm. and I ignore them because the suggested changes are not good you know they suggest that I take this off they suggest that I remove this what they're doing is they're just trying to make my page look a bit more crappier and it's it's not fair it's not nice but they're not doing that to help me they're not providing that feedback to do me a favor they're providing that feedback to make themselves feel better so um, Dave you're a photographer so say for instance you posted some photos up on your page or on my page some lovely photos of a recent wedding that you went to and another photographer said oh can I just give you some feedback some of the photos are really lovely but you should do them all in black and white and you were like oh okay you know okay so from now on then all my photos from now on I'll do in black and white now if you're thinking to yourself, well, actually, when I do the one with the sunglasses, that looks really crap in black and white. I don't want to do that in black and white. And if that person who's a competitor knows that they look crap in black and white, then is the reason they're telling you to change it or is the reason they're giving you that feedback a good reason or is it they're just trying to ruin your business? Because you know what? There's not many people like it, but there are some out there. There are some people so frightened of competition that they will try to jeopardise your business to make themselves look better. And there's a lovely saying that says, you know, you don't make your candle burn brighter by blowing out everybody else's. Unfortunately, some people weren't taught that. And they've grown up through life, probably got away with it at school, and they got away with it at college and things like that, and they've got away with it for the first part of their working life, where they got away with making themselves look better by making other people look crap and then what happens is later on in life when they become an adult they continue to try to behave that way they don't realize that actually that's not how you run a business that's not how you make friends and that's not how you network but what they try to do is they try to make you look a little bit crap by giving you this false feedback another thing that i hear regularly is somebody who is giving you feedback that has come from somebody else so you get this a lot more so in the office kind of environment um, where a colleague will say to you, you know, don't say anything, but I heard that our manager thinks this about you. Now, if you're somebody who lacks confidence or if you're new to a role or you've been off sick for a while and you've come back and you're kind of clawing your way back into your working environment, that kind of stuff is going to affect you. It's going to sit under your skin. So if, for instance, you're in the office and somebody comes up to you and says, oh, I just want to give you a little bit of feedback. My, I heard that our manager said the other day when you were wearing the skinny jeans to work, you shouldn't wear them anymore. Then you're going to sit there and you're going to think, that's really kind of, that's really harsh feedback because, you know, am I breaking the, the uniform law or something like that? And then what you might end up doing is um, not wearing them again. But actually, do you know what? You might have looked lovely. And there might be absolutely no problems at all. And your boss might not even said a word. But actually that person didn't like what you were wearing. So they're giving you that feedback from somebody else. And it's not true. So quite often feedback comes from quite a bad place. And they're bullies. 
that's simply all it is they're not nice people they're not they don't have your interests at heart they're not in it to support you they're in it to just be mean and that's what they're doing that's when it's completely okay to ignore feedback but it's very difficult to know if that's what's actually happening so you don't necessarily know that that's the kind of feedback that you're getting so my suggestion would be if you ever get secondhand feedback so feedback from somebody on behalf of somebody else challenge it go back to the source so when your colleague tells you that they've been told by your manager that you shouldn't do these things or that a piece of work that you did wasn't very good go back to the, your manager and say I understand you didn't like that report I did you know can you go through with me what you didn't like about it don't just accept that other person's view don't just accept somebody else's opinion or somebody else's feedback basically um, and accept that as being gospel because you don't know where it's come from if somebody gives you some feedback and they say to you that actually I don't like that challenge it a little bit more if it's something you really like then go back to them and say I really appreciate that your feedback um, you know thank you for telling me what you think can you explain in a little bit more detail can you tell me why you don't like it can you tell me what I should do differently you know give it a little bit more of a, a kind of push if you like because if the person is actually doing it because they think that they're doing the right thing for you they're going to have lots of excuses lots of reasons lots of things to tell you if they're doing it to just be mean they're not going to be able to back it up with any evidence so Dave for you for instance if it's a photography thing and that person's kind of telling you that you should do a certain um, use a certain lens or a certain type of way of, of taking the photos then what you can do is by saying to them okay then can you explain that to me they're going to be able to give you evidence they're going to be able to say well actually i read this report online and this guy who's a leading photographer said you shouldn't do that and then i'll send you a copy of the report great because now you've got some evidence as to why that doesn't work or why you shouldn't do that or why that's now outdated or whatever they can't back it up then you can just chalk it down to their experience their opinion and you can ignore it hi Leanne nice to see you welcome to the group I've got you on two now Emma's joined you twice so you can remove one of them if you want to or leave them both on it's up to you so that's an, another way of being able to pick out when people are just doing it to be mean and horrible and when they're doing it because that they they really do have your interests at heart and also um, as I said, with evidence-based, you know, you really want to get some evidence against it. So if you're looking at getting feedback from um, your boss in a one-to-one, -one, so one of the big ways that you'll get feedback is if you're in the working environment is through one-to-ones and through performance reviews. So if your manager is saying to you, actually, you know, you've had a lot of time off sick lately and, you know, your performance isn't great, don't just accept that. If you actually think, I work really hard, then challenge it back and say, well, actually, um, can you give me any evidence of this? Can you explain to me why my performance isn't very good? And then what they should be able to do is give you evidence of where they've collected that information from. So they will have reports, they will have printouts and spreadsheets of information. So either audits that you've been involved in or um, sales targets and things like that where they can say and show you clearly where you sit against where other people sit and they can show that your performance isn't in line with the rest of the business in which case that feedback's relevant if you say well I don't understand how I can't be performing because I, I feel like I work just as hard as everybody else then you can sit down with that person that, that your manager and go through those reports and say well where am I going wrong show me what I'm not doing show me what I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing and then you can come up with a plan going forward of how you can change that and again you can ignore that piece of feedback because right now it isn't relevant because you didn't know that you weren't performing or you didn't have the evidence so you weren't able to change it because you didn't know you were doing something wrong and then you can set a new goal going forward and you can say to your manager right now I know that when I when I run a certain report or when I do something in a certain way it causes problems with my performance then Give me a month of showing you under the new way of, sh of how I'm supposed to be doing it and let's see what my performance looks like then. If I'm doing it as everybody else is, if I'm still not performing, I hold my hands up, I take the bollock in, you know, that's fine. 
if when you're doing it and you then run it the right way and you start doing it the same as everybody else's and your scores come out higher and all of a sudden you're back in line with everybody else, then you can say to your manager, actually, I'd really like that taken out of my one-to-one -one because it's not relevant. You know, you scored me down for not performing, but actually I wasn't performing because the, the spreadsheet wasn't right or the report was wrong. And that's fine. If it's wrong because actually you're not doing your job properly, well then you can't have that taken away. That it is what it is. But you can start making improvements going forward to change that. So that's really good. But if you don't get that feedback from your manager that you're not performing, you'd never know. And then at the end of the year when you don't get as good as appraisal as everybody else, or you don't get a good bonus, or you don't get your sales targets, you won't know why. So feedback's really important that it's given to you for you to action upon. But if you don't agree with it, it's really great to be able to say to that person, hi Lisa, um, you'd be able to say to that person, okay, you know, tell me what I'm not doing or tell me what I'm doing wrong so that you can then make a change or improve it. You don't have to sit on that feedback for months and months and months and dwell on it and churn it over. The minute you're making changes, you can ignore it and you can move on because you're not doing that anymore. Same as if you're in a warehouse and you know you're you're packing boxes and you're doing it in a certain way, which means that you're slower than everybody else. If your manager is sitting with you saying, "Well, you know, Claire who sits next sits next to you, she packs twice as many boxes as you do an hour," then you can say, "Well, what am I doing wrong? You know, let let's go through my procedure. What do I do different?" And when you can highlight anything that you're doing differently, then you can change that, and that becomes good feedback that you can do something with. If actually when you go through the procedure you realise that actually you're not doing anything differently and maybe it's the reports that are wrong, well then you ignore that feedback because it's not relevant. So it is different. You have to make sure that when you get feedback you have to make sure that it's evidenced, that it is actually true and it's not just opinion and it's not just somebody guessing and saying to you, well actually I, I look at you and you look slower than everybody else. No, no, no. Get me a report that shows me I'm slower than everybody else get some evidence that I'm slower than everybody else. And when you get that evidence, and you hand me that evidence, and we can go through that evidence, then I'll accept that feedback. That's like going into a meeting and your manager saying to you, actually, you know, we've looked at it and we just think you're crap. And you go, well, okay, well, why am I crap? We don't know, really. You just seem to be crap than, you know, crappier than everybody else. You know, they all seem to do better than you. Well, seem is an evidence. That's just, you know, that's just an off-the-cuff opinion. You don't see everything that I do. You don't know what I do. So make sure that any feedback when it's formal like that from an employer is based on evidence. So for those of you that run your own business, um, say that you're a hairdresser or you run a beauty kind of school or you sell beauty products or you are a coach or you are a um, spiritualist, all of those kind of things, you rely on feedback as part of your business. A huge amount of feedback is, is how you run your business. So how do you know when to ignore feedback? Well, should you not ignore feedback at all really when you're running your own business? Definitely. Completely. There is no reason why you should be in a position where just because somebody tells you something is rubbish, it is. So a good rule of thumb is depending on how often you hear it. So if you are selling a product and you have two or three people telling you that that product doesn't work, then you should look into it, look into it more, action upon it. If you've got 20 people that say, oh my God, this toothpaste is amazing, and one person says, well, I think it's shit, didn't work for me, go back and ask that person some more questions. Find out how often they use it. Did they follow the instructions properly? Were they doing it right? Did they use it at all? Are they just somebody that likes to complain? Because let's face it, there are lots of them. So, because when you're running your own business, it is really based on you and, you know, every bit of feedback that you take seriously will mould the way your, your business runs going forward. And you are not going to please everybody all of the time. There isn't a single product that you're going to be able to create that everybody is going to love, apart from ice cream. And even then, I suppose there's a few people that might moan about it, but generally, ice cream is loved by most people. I'm sure that somebody's going to comment now going, oh, I don't like ice cream. So... 
when it comes to feedback for things like you running your own business, you have to be really careful that you don't come across as being aggressive or that you are being um, kind of moany that because somebody's complaining about your business that you're being defensive or aggressive. So one of the things to do is take the conversation offline. Don't do it in front of everybody. Don't get involved in a Facebook rant. And just to say, you know, if there's a comment on your face that says, this didn't work for me, a nice little comment that just says, could you do me a favour, could you private message me and let me know what went wrong? And then you can have a private conversation with that person and find out how they used it, why they didn't like it, what went wrong. And then you can talk to them about whether or not they were using things correctly, whether or not it was actually that it's their skin type that was a problem, was it the wrong product that they used, was it the right product that they used but they didn't use it correctly, all of those kind of things. And you can, again dig down and get the evidence into finding out why. And that's the biggest thing with it. You are always gonna find some people just want their money back and they just wanna complain. Some people will purchase something and it is wrong for them. They will buy your new amazing wonderful toothpaste and find that it doesn't work for them. Hi Verena, how are you? They will find that actually it doesn't work as well as everybody else. But if you've then got 20 or 30 comments from other people going, oh my God, this was amazing, it was the best thing I ever did, then you need to start weighing up whether or not you need to change your product. Is it worth changing everything that you do for 20 people that love it and one person that didn't? Sometimes you have to ignore that piece of feedback. You have to go, do you know what? It wasn't right for them, but it was right for everybody else. You still need to investigate it and find out why it didn't work because that's customer service, that's how it should be. What you don't need to do is take it all on board and stress and worry about it and worry that you know your whole product doesn't work now and then come to the kind of the conclusion that everything you're doing isn't working. So for me, for my my business, I'm gonna run lots of courses, I'm gonna do workshops, I'm gonna do boot camps, I do free PDFs, I'm gonna do training courses and I'm gonna do one-to-one -one coaching. Everybody I work with is going to react to that differently and I'm going to get lots of different feedback. So, for instance, my Facebook Lives, I'm going to have some people that say, I love them, they're brilliant, I love listening to them, they really help me. And other people that say, they go on too long. Somebody else is going to go, oh, they're a bit short, I wish they were longer. Somebody's going to go, well, I wish you wouldn't do them in your bedroom because I can see something behind you, it's really annoying, that's me. You could find somebody that says, actually, I'd like you to do them at 10 o'clock in the morning because that's when I'm free. Somebody else is going to go, well, actually, I'm at work then. Can you do them at 6 o'clock? If I tried to please everybody, then I would never win because I can't do them longer but make them shorter. I can't do them at 10 o'clock but do them in the evening. I can't do them in the bedroom whilst not in the bedroom. That doesn't work. You know, that's just not how it's going to happen. So what you have to do is look at the majority and say right okay when are most people going to be active when are most people going to be happy what's going to please the majority of people and then do odd little things for those people that are differently so most people are active around this time so i will do most of my lives in the evening at this sort of time going forward because that's when i'm going to get most views and most interaction most people watching but i know there's a few people that prefer to watch it in the morning so i will do a couple of those in the morning for those people and I allow it to be watched back. I set it so that it's saved so anyone can watch it at different times. I've got people in the group that are in Hawaii at the moment and in Australia and in New Zealand, which is lovely. But they're not going to be able to watch it at the same time when I'm around because most of the time I'm probably going to be sleeping when they're awake. And if it's our evening, it's their time during the day when they're at work. So things are very different. Timelines are very different. So I'm not going to be able to please everybody. So again, I need to look at the majority. I've got maybe five out of 100 people that are in a different time zone. So I'm going to focus more on those that are in the, in the Greenwich Mean Time. But I don't want to leave out completely those people that are on the other side of the water because they're really important to me as well. So I need to make sure that I do things to please them. But their feedback is going to be very different to your feedback. So it, I can't please everybody. So I have to say what I'm going to choose, what I'm going to ignore, how much of it I'm going to take on board, how much of it I'm going to, you know, act on. Some of the feedback I get I will acknowledge and then go, some of it I'm not going to, some of it I'm just going to listen to and go, okay, that's your opinion and leave it there. That's fine. I'm not going to come online and go, Denise said this and I don't agree with her, what does everybody else think? Because it's not about naming and shaming, it's about saying, right, okay, well, I've listened to what you've said, I don't necessarily agree with you, so I'm going to keep doing it, 
But if over the course of the next couple of weeks I have three or four other people saying the same thing, well then maybe I need to start listening to it. So a good rule of thumb is if one person tells you something, it's probably opinion. If two people tell you something, you should consider it. If more than three people tell you the same thing about the same product, then you need to start investigating it. You need to start looking at how other people feel. So you can do a poll or you can do a, um, a survey or you can start looking at different things to kind of go, right, actually, you know, how do people really feel about this? Because that's the third or fourth person now that's told me that that's really crap. Um, out of 10 people that attended one of my seminars, five of them said it was really shit, maybe I won't run that one again, you know, that kind of thing. Or I might look at the age group and go, well, actually, the ones that said were well, crap were the really young people, where the older people really enjoyed it. Next time I run it, I'll only run it for the older people. All of that kind of thing. That's how you use feedback. That's how you can pick feedback to accept and feedback to ignore. So I know it's been quite a lot and I know I've talked quite a lot, but I'm hoping that it gives you a little bit of understanding as to when you can ignore feedback and when it's okay to ignore feedback. And also just saying, you know, it's okay to not take everybody's opinion as gospel. It is just an opinion. And when people give you feedback, Truly and honestly, they are generally doing it because they want you to do better. There is a very small number of people who give poor feedback because they're mean and because they're horrible people. And you will generally know who they are because you, you spot them anyway and you know that about them in the first place. Most people will give you feedback because they want you to do well and they want you to do better. But it is your choice to accept that feedback. It's your choice to take it or not. Is your choice whether or not you accept it, whether or not you ignore it. Tomorrow we cover when you shouldn't ignore feedback and when it's really important to accept it because there are some very, very small exclusions to the rule. So a little bit of things like that is medical advice, that kind of thing. So we'll cover that in more depth tomorrow. So for those of you who got the email today, you'll know that there were some tasks um, that I mentioned at the very beginning of the live. So please make sure you go and have a look at the Facebook post and check out what your tasks were. Um, your challenge for today going forward, because remember you need to work at this. This isn't just me talking to you and you just listening to my advice. Um, your challenge going forward is to think about when you ignore feedback. And, oh, hang on a minute, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, sorry about this. So think about when you've ignored feedback. So um, for those of you that have posted or are going to post in the Facebook comments about um, a time that you ignored feedback, that's a great example because what I want you to do now is look at when you ignored feedback and when you shouldn't have done. So say, for instance, you were given some feedback and you chose to ignore it fantastic if that's what happened but if you had a negative impact to it and you should have done something more I want you to think about taking an action on that now so basically if you were told to do something and you ignored it I want you to go and go back to that feedback and act on it now make a change to it if you were given, given feedback and you ignored it and actually it was positive and you had a good thing come out of it then think about where you can apply that learning going forward with any feedback you get in the future because what I want you to do is remember that you've ignored feedback in the past and take the learning from it so if you've ignored feedback and you had a positive then keep doing it think about when you can do it again when you can apply that learning to something new and if you've had feedback and you ignored it and you shouldn't have done, then think about whether or not it's out of date or whether or not you can go back to that feedback and whether or not you can start applying that in future, whether or not you can act on that now. So once again, thank you for joining me this evening and uh, thank you for taking part in the challenge and everything else. And I will see you tomorrow for tomorrow's challenge where we talk about when you shouldn't ignore feedback and you should take it really seriously. Another email will find its way to you first thing in the morning. Feel free to give me a shout when you're free. Tomorrow is my mummy's birthday. So um, I may not be doing a Facebook Live tomorrow evening. I may well do a pre-recorded one during the day for you to watch later. So I can actually go and see my mummy and give her a present and stuff, which is all really exciting. And um, we're going to have dinner with my mum. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining me. Take care. See you soon. Bye.